Okay, so we're going to go ahead and talk about vertical motion when an object is moving in a circle. What I want you to imagine is, let's say I have like a paint bucket um, or any type of bucket, and it is tied to a string, and I am moving it in a circle kind of like this. So just go ahead and imagine that. So, and I would encourage you to try it yourself just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Just tie anything and have it spin in a vertical circle overall. Um, okay, so we're gonna find a couple things for this problem. We're gonna find the tension of the string that's at the bottom of the loop, and then also when it is at the top of a loop as well, and then min speed, cool. So let's go ahead and look at it at the bottom. So when it is at the bottom of the loop, let's go ahead and draw our good old free body diagram. Do, do, do. So it's spinning kind of like that. Now let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram. Always very important. So we have force of tension going up and we have force of gravity going down. Force of gravity in this case is going to be 60 newtons. Okay, so it's moving in a vertical circle. So the y direction is our like F net C direction. We'll say upwards direction towards the center of the circle is positive. So let's go ahead and set it up. So in the y direction, we'll have what? F net C equals tension minus FG. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. I'm going to actually, just to the side, because I didn't leave much space down here, I'm going to go ahead and calculate F net C. So I know F net C is going to be MAC, which is going to be what? M times V squared over R. And if I go ahead and plug everything in, so the mass is 6, V is what? 3 squared over the radius is 0.5. So for this, I get 108 newtons. So that is the net force when it's moving in a circle. Cool. So now let's go ahead and go back to this problem. So again, we're finding the tension at the bottom of the loop. So tension, FG is 60, F net C is 108. Um, do some good old math. Tension turns out to be 168 newtons. Cool. Now let's go ahead and look at it at the top. So I want you to think about as we saw this, like if you are if you are spinning something in a circle at the same speed, I want you to think about is the tension of the rope the same at all times, or is it more or less at the top or bottom? I notice when I'm spinning it in a circle, it is a little bit less. The rope's a little the rope is a little bit more slack at the top than it is at the bottom. Let's see if the math proves that. So at the top we have the rope is pulling downwards, so tension is pulling downwards. Gravity is also pulling downwards. We're going to ignore friction, all that good stuff. So the center of the circle is the positive direction right here. Cool. So let's go ahead and set this up again. This is the y direction. So when we set that up, we have F net C equals, and towards the center of the circle now is positive in this case, equals FG plus tension. Cool. F net C is going to be what? M A C M B squared over R, which we already did, and that turned out to be 108 plus F G. We know is 60 plus tension. Cool. Go ahead and do some math, and I get tension to be 48 newtons. Cool. So tension at the top was less than it was at the bottom. That kind of makes sense because at the top, gravity and tension are working together while at the bottom, they are not working together. So now let's go ahead and think about this. I would imagine we start to spin the bucket slower and slower. And what do you observe about something, the rope, when you start to spin something slower and slower? So the rope seems to, and again, where do we care about the min speed? We really only care about the min speed at the top because that's when, let's say, we had water in the bucket or something in the bucket, that's when something would fall out. Um, so I was just draw it at the top. So here, min speed. Okay, so normally we have gravity going down and we have tension going down. But at the minimum speed, this is when the tension, the rope starts to become really, really slack and the tension is approximately going to be zero or we're going to find the limit when the tension becomes zero. So normally at the top, and again we say towards the center of the circle is your positive direction. And we're assuming now that we're spinning it slower than three meters per second, and we're going to find that min speed. So if we set up, again, we're still looking at the y direction. F net C, we normally have tension plus FG up there at the top. But in this case, we're finding the limit when tension becomes zero. So we have zero plus 
FG is still 60. Gravity doesn't change. That would be pretty crazy if it did. Did. F net C is MAC, or you could say M times C squared over R. The mass is 6. Velocity is what we want to find over radius is what? 0.5 equals 60. Um, let's go ahead and do some fun math. So we have 6 C squared equals what? Multiply both sides by 0.5. So that's going to be 30. So V squared equals what? 30 over 6, which is 5. And V will be square root of 5, which is approximately 2.24 meters per second. I apologize, my memory was off. 2.23 meters per second. Cool. So that is the min speed. Another name for min speed, you'll also see it called critical speed. So that is the min speed or the critical speed for something to move in a circle. And 2.23 is less than 3 meters per second. Cool. Thanks for watching.